I'm sorry for that guys, nawala yung internet ko. So we'll proceed. So we are now in choosing my platform. Okay, so uh, we are now choosing a platform. Maghihintay-hintay lang tayo sandali para makahapol yung iba. So for this inconvenience, the end us. So, um, tayintayin lang natin makahabol yung iba. Again, um, this is now the, the part 2 of the webinar, the steps. So, we are now on step 3, which is choosing your platform. Okay. Okay, so sorry for that. Thank you so much, Richie, for, for telling me that walang sound. Okay, again. So these are choosing the platforms. Um, two platforms that I recommend if you're starting in freelancing is onlinejobs.ph. This is exclusively for Filipino freelancers. It's easy to create a profile and it's easy to look for jobs. We'll explore it later on. Um, and the other hand, Upwork is the biggest freelancing platform in the world. Um, for me, in terms of uh, job security and um, in terms of scam, 
mas 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 ano mas safe mas secure si Upwork but si Upwork lang you it's so hard to get inside their their um it's so hard to 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 um get inside Upwork and create a profile whereas in online jobs it's easier but uh, in terms of quality of work and in terms of terms of rate Upwork is 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 safer and in terms of better jobs um the reason online jobs was in for me in comparison to the both mas malit yung rates online jobs because uh there's there's mentality which i i kind of sad about it is because when it's uh, Filipino um, most of foreigners think that we're cheap and they really pay us low salary so I hope that will change in the future so these are the two platforms that I recommend uh, in if I have to choose because um, I would recommend Upwork if you have the budget to pay for each application but in terms of the quality of work and it's safer also because i got scammed before so medyo may alangan na ako na mag work uh, on other on other platforms uh, unless i know the person that i'm working with so uh, but in terms my i have some students who have some uh, a lot of success in online jobs at ph as for me i choose upwork so next week we'll be creating your freelancer profile i have a technique in how to get approved in upwork for the first time i hope it's still working it works last year i think it still works this year i have to to create an experiment on that so i have a, a technique on how to do that so next week on the creating of your freelancer profile i'll teach you this, so don't miss that it's also in the same day and the same time next week we'll be doing your freelancer profile all right so these are the two platforms and the last one is fiverr this or fever uh, it's up to how you read this um this is for short-term jobs and if you have select uh, certain services or skill sets that you can provide like for example creation of presentation or market research or or specific service or creating logos or creating websites you can charge for that and you can put it in favor and usually it's for short-term jobs and you usually uh, the lowest is five dollars for example you can create your logo for five dollars or i'll i'll create a 10 page presentation for five dollars those are some examples of services so if you are looking for part-time gig and i think it's if you have already a marketable skill right now um fever is also one way that you or a platform that you can consider um there are a lot of uh, these are the three um in terms of experience in terms of is um job quality and in terms of of growing your career these are the three platforms that i recommend there's a lot also you can also jobs in linkedin um freeup.net this is for more experienced freelancers and there they you can charge higher uh, rates um but right now it's starting to go down because there's a lot of freelancers that are going inside free up already but this is um what their their position is top one freelancers of the world so you can also have also freelancer.com craigslist you can get jobs in craigslist um linkedin is also a good platform to grow your freelancer career and uh if you are looking for um hearty just recommended at qa world for transcription there's a lot you just search it on google uh, i'm not really familiar with that and uh, if you wanted to do online teaching uh you talk philippines uh, the reason why i recommend you talk is the it's just an audio class so if you are camera shy um and you wanted to teach english so this is uh, for your teaching english to chinese a majority are chinese students um Utok is also great platform and their 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 rate is also high. So those are the platforms that I recommend. There's a lot again, these are not the only platforms out there, but in my experience and in my knowledge, these are platforms that I I, I really highly recommend. Okay. So 
um, what is a good freelancer platform? So, because there's a lot, there's really a lot of platforms out there, and um, I am biased because I'm only recommending those who have uh, that I already experienced or have created profiles with, and in terms of quality of work and and security also that you'll get paid. So I'm really biased on that, but these are criteria I'm, I'm choosing a platform. Number one, it's easy to use, of course. Um, you can be sure that you will get paid because, uh, of course, you have worked a lot. You spend a lot of time for a job and you'll not get paid. And um, there are a lot of scammers out there, actually. And you'll ha I'll, later on, I'll teach you how to spot those. Um, it's also one of the reasons why I kind of bias in Upwork because you can um, check actually if this client will be have the capacity to pay or not. And of course, there's a lot of jobs that you can apply to and there's an opportunity to grow your portfolio and then you have issues with your client or issues with how to use the platform, there's a good support for you to assist on that. So. In this criteria, um, what fits for me the most is if you're if you are um, starting in freelancing, or even if you're you wanted to grow your freelancing career, um, for me it's Upwork. Okay, the 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 platform that takes a lot. There might be a lot uh, other platforms, but in my this is I'm talking. Um, because I experienced it, I used it, I used the platform, I, I grow my career, and uh, I'm biased on Upwork again. But be, it's because of this. Uh, it's easy to use, and there are, they have a lot of features that you can you can be sure that you'll get paid. Um, there's just a, a, a disadvantage, though, because if you're using freelancer platform, for example, Upwork, they'll be getting um, in the first 500 for your client, they'll be getting 20% of your salary, uh, above 500, 10%, and above $10,000, 5%. But the good thing is, you are more, you'll, you're sure that you'll get paid, and it's a good way to grow your portfolio. So that's the reason why. Okay. So um, let's explore. I'll be exploring. Um, so um, most of my clients right now are are direct client, but I still have a profile in Upwork. So this is my profile. Okay. So um, so. I have three pros. Whatever, what? Because this is a new addition to Upwork. So, uh, okay, the internet is really slow. Hopefully. So this is my pro in Upwork and. Um, now you can have a general profile, a digital uh, offer, you can categorize that. And what a good one for me is um, this if you are so 100% job success rate, for me, whenever you do, I have a client, um, I always make, make sure I perform the job. So um, clients are. You will not be only. Um, you're not be able, able to choose. But also, client can choose better freelancers. And if you have this, you have to really work on this before you get this budget up here, top and 100 percent job success rate. So that's one thing that I like about Upwork in terms of profile. So next week we'll be diving more on this. So let's find some job in Upwork and I'll show you how to choose. Um, so then the reason why it's it's a good platform so for example digital marketing let's search on that so 
so of you just joined now and don't worry you can replay the video later on so that you can watch the beginning of this webinar so um this is why i work because of this um so let's proceed because we'll be exploring some jobs later on okay so This is a characteristic of good plan. I will show you why Upwork fits in this. You need to grow, have lots of jobs. So we'll be exploring Upwork. And um, create your profile. So next week we'll be diving deeper on this. I'll have a workshop where you will create your profile. I'll show you the step-by-step -step process of creating a profile. Okay, so um, the elements of a profile these are very important elements of the profile so you should have a professional looking photo because um whether we like it or not clients will hire us or people hire people they like okay so you should have a professional looking photo so in, when i say professional looking photo uh, is this a professional looking photo of course not right so uh, is this a professional looking photo probably in other profession but in terms of freelancing this is not a professional looking photo a professional looking photo is this uh, i'm so sorry manuel i borrow your photo for a while <laughs> so this is a professional looking photo you are wearing um formal clothes you're smiling and of course um, you look good and this is also for girls so it's a good profile this is a professional looking photo okay I'm sorry divine if I borrow your photo so just to show off what's professional looking photo okay so it's very important if you don't have a professional looking photo right now this is a must don't put selfie picture in your profession in your profile photo as a freelancer because you are offering your um, professional services so you should look professional in first impression last actually and this is the first thing that your clients will see aside from your portfolio all right so other elements, of course, your headline, if you have been experienced already, um, your highest value that you'll provide and how you can deliver your value if you have qualifications that are relevant to the job that you'll be applying on. So this will be um, the elements of a profile. So you have a headline, your highest value, your qualification, okay? Um, because this will be judged or by your potential employer okay so this is an example um, of course in your PHP developer how this how many clients he observes so it means that he has experience already and he know what he's doing and if you're reading this um, the employer will be okay I can trust this person of course they'll have to dig deeper also but um, it will give them more interest on you if you have put all of these elements okay so again next week we'll be diving deeper on on how to create your profile so that's a workshop that's not a webinar so that's a workshop and then we will be doing that okay so other elements what are the services that you'll be offering and of course how they can contact you if you'll be using um, I'll be showing you Upwork and how to do that um, important thing also is uh, portfolio if you have an article or blog if you are a content writer so if you can have an article or if you're a web developer of course you should have your own website right and uh, if you are a graphic designer you should have a portfolio for design because most of the time right now it's the skill that clients are after for okay it's not your education actually even if you don't have a certificate but if you have a very very good portfolio you can still
get a lot of good clients right so um, this is an example of my profile this is an outdated profile uh, I'll, I'll check back on Upwork if the internet is faster already so um, what I like about Upwork is if you are good if you are really um, good in providing services they will have give you this what this means is whenever you get a job in Upwork the client will and it you will always do the job and you will always deliver the job and top rated is because if you're because at the every end of the project your client will always will be asked to to give you a feedback or rate you and the good thing about that is if you are uh, if you have high higher rates so Upwork will put this badge on you okay we'll try to explore Upwork later uh, after this then you'll you'll have they have this um, this is just new I think they just um, launched this last year that you can have multiple profiles depending on the service that you'll be providing so for me I have a general it's more for for consultancy and general um, digital marketing strategy I offer also offer social media marketing and, and digital marketing so uh, and you can add more actually if you have a web developer so you can now categorize the services and depending on the job that you'll be applying for uh, you can choose which profile will be submitted to the client so let's check Upwork if, if internet is working fast okay so this is Upwork so again next week uh, um, we'll be diving deeper into this I'll teach you how to get approved in Upwork for the first time so right now uh, my clients are more of direct clients because I have already uh, created trust with them so I'm doing more of the consultancy thing than like fulfillment okay so I do the digital marketing strategy and um, it's up for the client to have us um, do it for them or they can look for other freelancers and do it for them okay so if you will see here for example digital marketing because this is my my forte if you look for that there's a lot of jobs right now and the good thing about Upwork is you can know if this is a good client or not for example this payment verified it means that whenever they they hire someone they can always pay because how upwork works is if you have a job if for example um an hourly rate they will con uh, you will connect you as an employer you will connect your credit card to to upwork so whenever your your freelancer will will do a job with them with Upwork, um, they will lock a certain amount so that at the end of the day, you'll get paid as freelancer. So payment verified. For payment and verified, it means that your client haven't connected a credit card on their account. So most of the time, I don't apply to work that, uh, to, to jobs that don't have payment verified. Okay. I also look at the feedback for the client. It means that this client is really good in terms of 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 working with freelancer they're good experience so that's important for me and how much they spent on upwork this means they have already a lot of experience in handling freelancers so those are my categories and that's this is why i like upwork compared to other platforms okay so i only apply to jobs that are payment verified skills and of course you will know how many proposals or how many applicants have sent their application letter so proposals in Upwork that's just another term for application letter so you will know how many how many are you competing with okay so that's one thing that's that I like about Upwork okay so you get what you pay for so this is also one thing that you will know okay so for me I always uh, work with um, payment verified clients I um, they have good feedback they spent already uh, quite a good amount in Upwork because it means that they know how Upwork works uh, it's so hard to be teaching your client how Upwork works if you are also a beginner okay and you can know how many proposals have been sent in that uh, job okay so that's 
what I like about Apple. Okay, and that's why I, I tend to bias on this platform. But uh, they just have um, a higher percentage cut at the, first, at the beginning. But for me, I prefer that than not being paid at all. So it's a win-win situation for me. Okay, so that's my opinion. Uh, other platform also is onlinejobs.ph. So kind of right client, they don't have that functionality where um, you can see something like this, but it's so easy to get approved. You just have to be really um, vigilant in for if the job is come or not, and you will only know that once the client will not pay you after a month. Whereas in Upwork, if they are payment verified, you could leave a job, you will get paid. There is no dispute between you and the client, and you literally deliver a good job with the client. That's what I like about um, Upwork. But, and the, the downside on Upwork is they have a high percentage cut, which is 20%, but for me, it's, it's okay. And it's so hard to get approved in Upwork. But I have a technique that I'll teach next week. Um, in in online jobs at page, it's easy. There's a lot of jobs, also, as you can see right here. Um, there's a lot of, so you can see if they're looking for full time or not. So next week, we'll be discussing more on this. So uh, it's easy for you to look at jobs and to start your freelancing career um, rolling in online jobs at page. So this is exclusive for Filipinos. So not a lot of competition in, in compared to Upwork, but uh, there's not a lot of also you will not really know if the client is have a um, they're good payer, um, they're good client, so you'll have to figure that out. So those are the the, the pros and cons, and you should have weighed that in terms of which platform will you start. Okay. Let's proceed. So characteristics of a good, good, good client, it fits your skills, of course, it fits your schedule. If you are not working right now, of course, you'll have a lot of, you'll have your time. But if normal circumstances, if you are working, if you have a day job, you should look for jobs that are like, like for example part-time and of course it fits your pay or your rate okay probably you wanted um you you think that you're an expert already and you you charge higher so of course you only have for for jobs that will pay higher so list bids or proposals you will not know this in online jobs but in upwork you'll know that and the client is good so as i've discussed you you'll can see that if the clients are hiring um or payment verified, of course, higher rating, they have good reviews and good upwork spending because they have, uh, they're they easy to work with. It's For me, uh, stress is a major factor. If you're working with a client that, that doesn't know what they're doing and you'll have to educate them. And so probably if you're beginning to work or you're to, to grow your freelancing career, that's just okay for you to have that kind of experience. But if you are already like um, intermediate or more advanced in your freelancing career, so you might be selective with your client, okay? So you have to weigh that also which stage are you in, in, in freelancing so that you will know how to, to, to balance and to select your client. So, but for me, these are my, my criteria of working with clients. If they don't fit on this criteria, I don't work with them. Uh, that's why I, I I am biased with Upwork because I will I can see all of this criteria right here. Okay, compared to other freelancer platforms, we don't have this. Other probably might have this, but in my experience, um, I'm kind of Upwork because that's the platform that I have a lot of experience with. Okay, so now um, we'll be sending proposals. Um, proposal is just another term for application letter in Upwork. Okay, so the proposal that I am telling or I am referring to here is proposal being sent in. 
Okay, there's another proposal also um, for project proposal that's for direct clients, but this is a different proposal. This, um, this our proposals or application letter, this is the same in terms of uh, online jobs that PH or 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 Upwork. Okay, so why I I tend to stick on that because as a beginner you you might it might be better for you to start with these platforms to gain your uh, experience and to know how you can work with clients. Okay, so. Uh, if you're sending proposals, uh, I'm referring to Upwork, so usually you will not know the name of the client and the reason for that is Upwork doesn't want you to work directly with, with uh, that client because they will not get their cut, okay? So uh, it's against their, their policy to work directly with client, okay? So usually you don't know the name, you will not know the name, so... Um, Usually, I'll just say they're hiring manager or um, good day. So it's a professional greeting and you should be warm, all right? Then make a strong introduction. You have to think what does this client need and how will be able to fulfill that need, okay? Because this is very important. Why? If clients will be bombarded with a lot of applications, so you should stand out and you should immediately tell them why will I work with you or why am um, why are you the best um, freelancer to hire so you have to create a strong introduction so if you need someone who can write about scrum if they're looking for um, a specific for example a scrum team coordinator so you can tell if you're looking for someone you should anticipate what do they need okay giving independent authoritative insights I can help Okay, so this is what you need. I can fulfill that if you need that person. Okay, so you have to know how to anticipate the need of your client. Then you can, you should showcase your experience. Make your clients, okay, okay, so I, I, you know what I need? So are you sure that you can fulfill the task that I'd like you to, to do? And you will dish, okay, so I have handled 42 learning projects, so I already, I have the skill sets and experience to be able to deliver the task or the project. So that's what you will be answering here. So you should highlight your strengths, your education, you have your skills, certification, experiences. You should highlight that in a way that what's in it for your clients so in a proposal you you should not talk more about yourself you can highlight your experiences in a way that it will make your clients feel that you know how to do the job and that you can deliver because oh the question always is what's in it for them if they hire you okay so you have to showcase that in a way that will tell them, okay, if you'll hire me, I can deliver the job because I have this skill sets, this experience, this certification, all right? And if it's some how to, to, to do that job, it will strengthen your, your, um, your position in being the best uh, applicant if you will tell them the step-by-step -step process on how you'll do or complete the project or the job. So you have to explain to them. So for example, are you planning to build an e-learning site and complete in two weeks? I suggest using GoToMeeting for daily online handle with the team. You can also coordinate and monitor using project progress using Basecamp. So you are now positioning yourself as an expert and you are telling them, hey, if you want to do this, so these are the things that we should do. Okay, so this, this you are not just telling yourself that, hey, I have an experience, but I really know what I'm doing based on this. So how will you complete the project? How will you do the project? So you have to tell that in a step-by-step -step but concise manner that will prove to the client that you know how to do things, okay? And if there are some things that you really don't understand, you can ask the functions about the project. Or if you don't know, okay, may I ask how many hours do you need this project to be done or how many days, how, how soon do you need this project to be done if they don't specify it in the um, job um, offer, okay? So you can ask specific questions.
questions. So this means that you care about the project and because you're asking questions already, you, you are um, telling the client subconsciously that I care about that and I care about this project and I really want this to be done. So I'm asking some questions relevant to the job. So um, there's a take if trick that I, I, I also do that I also um, read somewhere else. So if the job offer, which I'll show you later on what the job offer is, is short, you can you submit a short proposal or application or cover letter. Or to the client if it's long and if it's detailed you can you should also submit a long proposal a detailed proposal to your client because uh, you should mimic how your clients work okay for them to to be able to work with you or to be able to choose you that's that's, that's psychology already but that uh, I see that that works so let's look at some jobs in Upwork hopefully the internet will participate so a job offer is, for example, if I'm interested in this digital marketing manager. All right. So a job offer is this. So this is, for example, this is not so long. So this is the job offer, actually. Okay, so this is more detailed. So what you'll do is submit a all um, means that they're looking for um, German speaker. I don't know if, it's, if this is really German. So we'll see. Yeah, German. So this is a job offer. What I'm telling is if they submit something like this that's really detailed, your proposal is long and detailed. But if their job offer so this is a job offer or a proposal is again another way for 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 application letter cover letter okay so um again platform is this just in my sense one of the best platform to work with especially if you're beginning to 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 start your if you're starting your freelancer career Okay, for example, this is a very short um, job offer, so you can submit a shorter proposal. Obviously, the client doesn't need, like to read long proposals, so so that's that's what I'm telling about. If you're there, their job offer is short, you can submit a shorter proposal. If it's long, you can also submit a long proposal, okay? So those are some of the tips that I learned. Okay. Okay. So how will you determine your your rate? Okay. If you're starting, okay, how much will your rate be? Do you charge fifty dollars immediately? You charge twenty dollars, three dollars. Uh, so we'll be discussing that how to determine that. Of course, you have to get uh, the budget to get the job done. Uh, this is um, for projects that need some investment, for example, web development. So uh, for web development projects, you need to, um, to uh, consider the budget for, for domain name, for hosting. And if they wanted to use a template, you have to put that in your pricing also, if that's uh, if that's not included, okay. So, um, of course, market price. Of course, you will have to know how how much are the people charging. So, there are some tips and tricks that you can charge higher rates uh, compared to your competitor, but still the the, uh, the client will hire you. But that is on how you submit your proposal, how you how experienced are you. So, usually. The proposal is a key factor in how if the clients will hire you or not because that's the first thing that they'll read about you then they'll explore your profile your portfolio all the other things and your your feedback so uh, sometimes the client will negotiate so you'll have to adjust also so you'll have to prepare uh, you'll have to give give margin for negotiation 
So usually those are the rates. So let's look at how much are usually people are charging in, in Upwork right now. Okay. So let's go back to Upwork and let's see um, the rates. So if you're starting a you know rate, so if you have a skill already, so let's look for freelance here. And for example, you are offering social media. So, so how much are people charging for social media marketers? So So for those who have just joined, um, this is the second part already. Uh, we have a recording of the first part, so you can always watch that so that you can follow. And this is a series. Next week, there will be another webinar. Um, uh, later on, I'll be discussing that. So right now, we're exploring about the rates of freelancers. And we'll, we will look actual rates that people are charging um, in Upwork, okay? So I, I'm so sorry, um, the internet is not really so fast right now. Great, so that you will have an idea of how much people are really charging right now and why, why, okay. So these are an example. So these are the rates. So people how much they earn already social media marketer so we will filter this so how much are filipino social social media marketers charging you will have an idea for social media market also try to look at um, okay so let's check philippines So these are actual rates that people are charging. People, this is an Upwork, and um, you know, Upwork are very transparent over how much you earned as a freelancer because that's an indicator of how good um, of a freelancer you are. So uh, Philippines. Okay. These are actual Filipino freelancers that are working as. A, uh, you are using Upwork right now, and you will see how much they are charging. The market rate of a social media marketer. You can also search for virtual assistant, for example, this. So you can see they're charging $6 an hour. They earned already um, $16 an hour, $9 an hour. They earned $2,000. These are up fully. So for this, $25 an hour, $30. So um, they, these are actual earnings and actual, okay, so you can see. Um, if you're just starting, you can charge so that you can get experience, of course. Start with 3 or $4, depending on your experience. And if you have a marketing experience already, that's, that's better. And people are willing to pay for, for experience also. And it's arbitrary, actually. How much do you think your your so you can put that in? You will be the one to 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 dictate that in in Upwork. How much are you charging? So that's what I also like in freelancing. You know, for example, uh, I started an hour. Then the next client that I have, I charge ten dollars an hour. Then the next is fifteen. And it, because as as I become better in freelancing, of course, I get I can do better quality work and I get job faster so I can charge higher rates okay so these are 
this is just to give you an idea how much uh, rate. So these are in dollars, okay? These are in dollars. You can also have look for um, fixed rate jobs. And this is 100% job success rate, meaning that this virtual assistant, if you, you work with him, um, he will always do the job, okay? So um, that is an example of social media marketers, okay? So let's proceed to... Um, Okay, so if clients will will like your proposal or your application or your cover letter, they will most of the time they will interview you. Okay, so how will you pass the interview? And because um, this is one of the thing in my experience, a lot of my students are really afraid of the interview part, which of course that's understandable. But you should accept that it's really part of of, of the your freelancing career and you should really be comfortable in being interviewed um, online facing a camera okay so if you will be interviewed if you have these are the things that you should do you should dress up and look good even if it's just half your body no matter what you're wearing down there uh, as long as you're wearing um, formal clothes up in a half of your body uh, that's already good. And usually, if you're a, a woman, try to put some makeup on. Uh, think of it as being interviewed offline. If you're going to a job interview, uh, most of the time you'll wear uh, something formal and you'll dress good, dress up. So it's the same also in being interviewed online, okay? Because impression matter. Have a nice background. If you don't, um, what's recommended is you have to have white background. If you don't have a white background, get a white cloth and put it as a backdrop, okay? And be on time. If your interview time is, let's say, 10 a.m., be there 30 minutes before the time, okay? Then you should then send a message to your client reminding them gently that, hey, client, I'm ready for an interview. Talk to you in 30 minutes, okay? That means that you are punctual in being interviewed. If you are late on the interview, process how much more if you are being hired right so that's important okay and check if is if everything is working your camera your mic your internet if you load if you are using free or just wi-fi it should have a load and it should be um enough to be finished with interview because it's it's so frustrating if your client will say you're and you're out of load and you're you're being interviewed in the middle of the night and no store is uh, every store is closed already. So that's very frustrating because you will not know what the client will say if they say that you're hard or you're you're annoying or whatever it is. So check everything. Okay, then smile and relax. Don't be afraid that you'll you'll have grammatical errors because but if you feel confident that will radiate and it will be felt with, by the client even if it's online. So you should smile and relax and talk in a casual but in also in a professional manner. Okay? Just be confident and and just relax. If you don't understand a question, ask for clarification. Okay? Because there are times that will of course we have a, a language gap and they have this some of the clients they have this um, uh, slang that you don't understand so you have to clarify mr client when you say this do you mean this okay so that one of the reasons also why why a lot of uh, foreigners like working with filipinos because we have a good command of english that you should uh, don't be scared if you will have wrong grammar because even native americans are can also be wrong in terms of their grammar as long as you understand each other and as long as you're confident and relaxed then that's better but if you are if you wanted to become english teacher as an ESL teacher of course you should have a good command of english okay but all others uh skills like web development that doesn't require really good uh, 
as long as you can understand the task and you can deliver, that's well and enough. Okay. So you have to be ready with how much are you rate. Okay. If you are, if you don't put it in your in your application letter, uh, usually the client will ask for that. How much do you charge for this? I can't. I don't have a budget for that. How can you go? Okay. Sometimes the clients are also testing you. So and then you should also be aware of the market because how much are others offering then competitor offers and their rates okay if there are tasks that are being asked and you can't deliver you can for example when you're uh, during the interview and the client will tell you um uh, that you are the job offer is web development and you know you're good in web development but the client will ask you um do you also do um content writing if you don't know how to do that you can say no or you can say, um, sir, client, uh, as now, I don't have that skill set yet. But if you give me time, I'm very much willing to learn. Okay? Because um, clients also don't want to be wasting a lot of their time hiring a lot of people. If you are someone who's willing to learn and grow with them, that's something that clients will value. Okay? So um, keep a notebook if clients are, you can, you should also take some notes because some clients will ask you, uh, do you understand what I said? Can you repeat that? Of course, notes are, will be helpful. And um, one of the things that is um, a trick question if they ask you, hey, uh, why do you want to work with me? And why, and you, if you say, I want to work with you because I am, uh, I wanted to look for another job, um, and they ask you why? Why is you? Why do you want? Uh, why did you end your job with that? So for example, certain client or boss, and you say negative things about that. So that's a no-no. You have to keep that, uh, and you have to think that when you say negative things about other people, the client will will think if you are telling negative things about your past boss, boss, then probably when you will be ending your relationship with that person, they will also tell negative things um, to others. So that means you don't have the loyalty. And sometimes, and most of the time, but re most of the time, attitude matters for clients. If you wanted to have a long lasting relationship with your potential client, all right? So you can, you should also ask, ask the client will provide access to some tools and trainings and just be honest if you don't know how to do the job if you don't understand what they're saying you, you, can, you should be honest okay and there are some questions that you have to be ready to answer it's like for example why do you want to work on this project why do you want to work with me you can just say because this is in line with my career i wanted to grow in this uh, this career and i think working with you is um in line with my career path, I am, and I'm really excited to work on that, uh, to grow that, my career. Okay, so what previous work have you done that is similar to this project? Of course, that will show you that you can do the job. What steps will you take to make this project successful? So those are some things that are example uh, questions that you should be ready to answer uh, if the client will ask that. Okay. So if you pass the interview and you really nail it, thank you. The next thing will be onboarding. Okay. So in onboarding your clients, because in freelancing you should have a good information about your client. Because sometimes we we forget, especially if we're working um, for several months already with a client, we forget what they, they want from us, uh, their communication, their information about them. So it's good thing to have the data, the name of the client, their overview, the job overview, the, their preferred time of work, and their payment schedule. So in Upwork, this is already taken care of, okay? So you should also know what's the reporting schedule and style. Do they want uh, the reporting to be written, to be emailed, or to be on the chat, or uh, also what are the means of communication? Do they want to have a video call? Do you want to have just a chat? Which chat platform? And how? what is the feedback system? Do they want to give you 
a feedback anytime you do a job or they just want you to report this is what I did uh, risk check that so depends on the client so you should know that you can also ask if there is training needed and are the tools to be used and you should set right expectation okay if you don't know how to do something tell the client that for now it's not part of my skill set but I'm really and very much willing to learn okay so be honest so if this is really taken care of if you are like for example online shops at ph you should have this um, database you can create um, google sheet for this it's the name client overview um, probably one of these days it's remind me to give you a template for this if you're working with clients because it's really helpful because sometimes if you grow your freelancing career and you'll be tackling multiple clients you'll forget okay how does the client wants to be communicated with or what is the job you might forget that sometimes so it's a good thing to have that um, information on hand about your client okay and it's just good practice freelancing so once you get a client it's time for you to have a sustainable freelancer career so you'll have to have a good uh, flow of clients and you can only do that if you take care of your client you communicate well because one of the frustrations of foreigners with filipino filipinos is that we'll just we ghost that okay because uh, they'll ask us to do something and we just even if we don't know how to do that and if they'll ask us for to deliver the output we just get lost okay and that's not really good and that's really bad for the entire filipino freelancing communities and that's a very common um frustrations of foreign clients to filipinos we just disappear and sometimes there's a lot of reasons why we we did not we're not able to deliver the job a lot everyone is dead already in your give an excuse why you are not able to deliver and that's bad practice okay and always learn because the freelancing especially if you're in digital marketing it's a very dynamic industry what works today may not work tomorrow so you have to be always learning okay and specialize be very good at it okay because once you specialize you can high uh, charge higher rates you probably your your um, market size will become smaller but if you're really good at something people will be willing to pay for that okay join freelancers group just search freelancer Philippines in in Facebook and there's a lot of groups out there and get certificates okay uh, later on I will show you a very good offer right now that you can get certificates and that's really one of the things that clients are looking for okay so that's how to get sustainable job all right so we're nearing the end of this webinar um thank you so much for those who stayed um right now this is a quite um i'm ready to answer some questions if you have some questions you can ask them um in the comment section okay so I'll wait for a minute so I'll wait for some comments or questions or some clarifications <clears throat> um, you can put it in the comment
Okay, so we have some questions. Um, paano po makakapasok sa freelancing groups? Uh, there's a lot of freelance. If you're asking for the general freelancers group, um, there's a lot of groups in the Philippines. You just search it in Facebook. And for this webinar, we'll also have a group for this. I will post the group link so you can uh, then join that group. Um, um, for the question of Ching, same time. Like, yes, same time, 8 p.m. Um, if you can, if you'll miss the, it, don't worry. This will be posted in my page, and you can replay it and watch it in your free time. So, same time, 8 p.m. Next week, we'll be discussing about how to create your freelancer profile. That's a workshop, so it means that we'll be working on creating your profile. So you'll do it with me, all right? So so that you'll have your freelancer profile created. Okay, so my free engineering freelancing by yes, uh, usually engineering designs. Um, you can just search for free uh, engineering um, online engineering services. So there's a lot. I think there's also an Upwork. Um, well, let's let's try. Let's find job engineering. Because there are people who are looking for engineering designs things like that okay and there are sites there are uh, there's an engineering uh, freelancing group actually okay and I've known some engineers who um, prefer to stay at home and okay so um, Ching, I'll answer your question. Okay, so it's for example, this engineering specialist, so looking for level. So uh, these are some engineering um, <clears throat> freelancing, but there are, I know there are specific sites that are for, for engineering. So just search on that. Um, usually those are engineering designs like um, housing or or machine designs, all of the things. There is a, there is a platform for that. I, I'm just not really familiar with with that, but I know there is. Okay. So for a question of change, saan po ba kami mag-start matuto ng mga skills? Later on, I will uh, there is um, I will recommend you to a site where you can get a certificate, and that's really really a good certificate. Okay. All right. So thank you, DICT, for posting the link of the group. So that's the group where you can join. Okay. So do we, do we have any more questions? So uh, if you don't have any more questions, so let's proceed. Uh, we're almost. So, okay, so question, Ching, saan ba kayo matuto? Sir, so if you want to learn more, so <clears throat> you can go to this, okay, digitalmarketer.com lab plus two. Uh, I am a certified partner of, of the Digital Marketer and there, for me, this is the best digital marketing training. So if you are interested in digital marketing, so you can go to this. Um, there are also other websites like Udemy <clears throat> where you can learn a lot of skills. Um, you just search for a specific skill, then you can, say, for example, learn Facebook advertising and it will pop up in, um, in Google. And if you want, you can explore this digital. They offer their certification courses that cost you around $500 per course. But right now they're offering it for free, so you can take that opportunity to learn. Okay, that's this more of uh, the general uh, skills. So if um, if you want hands-on training uh, for free, um, you can check on Digital Jobs page technical training of the Department of Information and Communications Technology or the DICT. But because of COVID right now. Um, that training will be postponed after this is done. But 
they're really offering this one of the best uh, hands on course but at the end of the training you will really learn a lot okay so just search for the department of information and communications technology page on your region because uh, this, there, this is your region um, <clears throat> then stay for their post because after this this um, um, coronavirus break okay so yeah I'll question uh, in the city page. So, okay, please post it. So, um, after this corona outbreak, there will they will be um, out. And um, as much as I know, there will be six, six locations because that's hands-on and that's a free training. Okay. So to answer questions. Are there are lots of accounting jobs available? Yes, there's a lot of accounting jobs. Um, most of the jobs are in QuickBooks. So if you go to Upwork also, there's also in all jobs, I know. Uh, here, let's look here. Um, accounting. So there's a lot of accounting jobs available also. So um, there's a lot of accounting jobs online just then also in in and uh, uh, so, yeah what if no experience yet should be put in the letter so that's the reason why I uh, say for example this okay there's are there are these are accounting um, jobs okay so accounting manager accounting manager US yes, accounting accounting bookkeeping so these are some jobs for in accounting and I know there's a lot experience yet um, what I really recommend is to get certifications um, go to digitalmarketer.com they're working for free so that you'll have something to put on your in your portfolio and um, I really recommend that you should only apply for a job that you know how to do okay don't believe in the saying that fake it until you make it and that's really bad in long term um, in your long term career as a freelancer so what i suggest is if you don't have an experience or a skill yet so learn a skill and apply that for your own for example if you're like web developer if you're learning web development create your own website if you're doing social media marketing create your own social media pages and promote it so those are the things that you can do and we'll be doing that also uh, on our webinar so if you know how to do the work what you can do is in your in your cover letter you, you uh, enumerate the step-by-step -step process and how to do the job okay that's one thing I I've done that before when I don't have an experience but I know how to do the the job I list the step-by-step -step process and how the job is done okay that's also one way to be uh, to, to do it if you don't have the experience but you know how to do the job all right just make sure that you can really deliver um, what they need you to do all right so um, after this COVID I know the city will be rolling this digital job space technical training program uh, you just just watch out for that and again you just can go here to digital marketer uh, what I suggest is you learn this, you apply it on your own freelancer career. Okay. So if you need more, more this is just an idea right now. I have already a module for this. It's the 30 day freelance program where in every day you'll have specific tasks. Uh, if you're interested in this, just um, message me on my page, Coach Ian Junaldo, Facebook.com forward slash coach Ian Gionaldo or comment in this live video if you're interested in this 30-day freelancer program um, this is a daily you'll do daily task and after 30 days what we're looking for is you will have a job as a digital marketer because I'll be teaching you digital marketing skill because that's my forte at the end of 30 days but it's a daily task and you you will have to have an output every day 
Um, so that's this is a plan, uh, but if there are probably 15 people who are interested, I'll, I'll roll this out. Um, so if you're interested in this, please comment if you're really interested, meaning if you're interested, you're willing to do the daily task uh, for 30 days, okay? You'll do, if you, you know something to do and you really wanted to have a freelancing career and you need someone to really guide you and push you to do things, um, you might be interested in this. If you're interested in this 30-day freelancer program, um, comment. Yes, I'm interested in the 30 freelancer program, and I'll I'll try to to roll this out for uh, for 30 days. Okay, so if you're interested, so the goal is after the 30 days, you'll have the skills, you'll have the ads that you can get already a job after a month. Okay, so this is designed for for beginner and intermediate. And because this is freelancing, what I suggest if you, you have uh, good equipment already and you have good internet connection because this is a daily task and you have good uh, communication skills because that's really, really important if you're a digital marketer. Okay? If you're interested in this, again, interested in the 30 day freelancer program. Right? So this is just, I'm just looking for um, interest right now because if there are probably at least 15 people who are interested in really to commit themselves into this, um, I'll probably roll. Okay? So, um, again, this is just part one of the webinar series. So, today we'll discuss how to become a freelancer. If you're late in joining this webinar, you can always watch the replay. Next week, we'll be creating your freelancer profile. It's the same day. The same time, it's 8 p.m. on April 8th, then on April 18th, uh, you'll submit your freelancer profile and we'll critique some of it so that you have an idea, okay, what are the um, opportunities to improve in my profile, okay? Then on part three, on April 15th, we'll be on media pages and on April 20th, we'll be having a critique media page you'll submit that so um the next is creating your portfolio site so we'll also critique your portfolio website then the last part is creating your because what our aim is uh, at the end um probably you'll have a good base to uh start your freelancer career so um these are already so mark your calendars for this date so April week then April 13 for the critique. So you you can submit your profile so that you will we will improve. Then uh, um, at the same time also we'll be doing our 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 live every 8 p.m. Okay. So so that uh, those who are still doing or wanting uh, or considering to venture into freelancing can also join. But links will be always available for you to watch them for replay, all right? Okay, so um, this is already the end of the web. So again, everyone, thank you so much for joining me in this um, webinar. I'm so glad to be with you tonight, and I hope I impart um, relevant knowledge to you. Um, if you really like this webinar, please, uh, you can leave a review on my page. You can also share this to others because this, this will be posted in my page so that they can watch it for replay. Um, don't forget to join the next webinar because uh, as part of the certificate, we'll be giving certificate, but one of the, uh, you should have an output for us to give you a certificate. It will be from the Department of Information and Communications Technology. So it will be from me and also from the DICT. All right? So that's a good certificate already for you. Um, just want to leave you with this quote. If you really want to do something, you will find a way. But if you don't, you will find an excuse. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone, and have a great night. <laughs>